Greetings. Please forgive the clickbaity title for this video, but unless you come up with something clickbaity, it just gets lost among the sea of videos being uploaded to YouTube every day. Earlier today, I watched a most excellent video here on YouTube about a particular period in the history of dubstep. Dubstep, of course, is the indigenous folk music of where I live, the Kronks, Croydon. And if you've listened to any of our music over the last several years, there is a dubstep element in pretty much everything we do apart from the occasional fully acoustic track. My musical partner, Louis, and myself both grew up listening to, among other things, progressive rock. In my case, the first half of the 80s, the new wave of British progressive rock. Solstice, Marillion, Twelfth Night, Palace, bands like that. Louis, who's about 10 years younger than me, a bit more into the prog end of, of classic rock. So he's a big Iron Maiden fan, Pink Floyd, that kind of thing. One thing that the documentary I watched about dubstep focused on was that the subject matter of a lot of dubstep in those good early pre-Skrillex days was very much about the harsh, mundane realities of life in Croydon, in London, in Bristol and other places where the music took off. And it was noticeable in the way that the people who followed that scene or the artists dressed and behaved, there was nothing rock and roll about it. It was real life. The progressive rock and a lot of the heavy rock that Louis and I were into is at the opposite ends of the spectrum. An awful lot of that was full of fantasy. A lot of the subject matter was kind of quite hippie in a way. It had very little to do with life outside. And I suspect that a lot of people got into that music really as an escape from everyday life. They didn't want their music rubbing their nose in the difficulties of daily life. The music was part of their way of escaping. So when we make our music, there is that little bit of a question to be asked and the tension between realism, everyday life, reflecting the life we have, or alluding to fantasy, science fiction, mythology, and so on. But the world has changed. So even the most street of people these days might well play role-playing games. They might well play online games such as World of Warcraft, etc. Everybody loves science fiction and fantasy films, which were, they were a rare and special thing when I was a kid. These days, half the things that come out are science fiction or fantasy. So there's been a little bit of a cultural shift into such things being acceptable. So where our music is at the moment, and has been for the last two or three years, a lot of our titles refer to ancient history, refer to science fiction, particular characters or novels. They might refer to specific fantasy novels or series or characters. But what I hope we're achieving is not an old hippie escape from reality type of thing, but an acknowledgement that these forms of entertainment are now part of mainstream culture and they're not totally about escaping from everyday life. They are entertainment. I don't live in a terrible area, surrounded by drug dealers and gangsters and pimps and thieves, that I know of anyway. So it would be a bit daft for me to be creating tracks with titles that refer to that kind of thing. It just, it would be dishonest, it wouldn't be real. Whereas I do watch a lot of science fiction and fantasy TV and films. I do read science fiction and fantasy. A great interest of mine is in ancient history and mythology. So being honest about what I'm into and expressing that in music does mean that that's where a lot of our subject matter comes from and our titles. And I also have always loved science fiction and fantasy artwork and I love coming up with covers for our tracks and albums and worth pointing out that if you listen to our stuff on Bandcamp, we often have 
individual art for each track, which obviously doesn't come across on places like Spotify, but in Bandcamp you can do that. And I love finding interesting footage to make the videos that go with our tracks. And pretty much every track we do now has a video because you kind of have to be everywhere. And although there's the occasional recent video that touches on a subject of kind of dystopian reality, mostly I've gone the historical fantasy science fiction route. I have no plans at this point to change that. So expect that for the near future. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you again soon.